Hello everyone, this is Naomi Xantis and I hope you all are doing well. Today I'll be doing my presentation on Franz Fanon and Franz Fanon's contribution to psychiatry, The Psychology of Racism and Colonialism by Hugh F. Butts. Franz Fanon, a West Indian intellectual, psychiatrist, and activist, was born on July 20th, 1925 in the French colony Martinique. Both of his parents were of African descent, but his father was also of Indian descent and his mother was also of white descent. He lived in a middle-class household where his father worked as a customs agent and his mother worked as a shopkeeper. He was able to attend a prestigious high school in Martinique where he was exposed to famous poets and writers such as his role model and one of his major influences, Amy Césaire. He grew up with seven siblings, two of which died at an early age, unfortunately, but during World War II, Fanon fled his home country and enlisted in the French army where he later left. He then attended the University of Lyon, where he studied literature, theater, philosophy, and psychiatry. His work has been influenced by the French poet, Amy Cezier, as I mentioned before, he really, really loved this guy, Marxism, and the Negative Movement. I don't know if you guys know about the Negative Movement, but it was a literary movement founded by Emmy Césaire, Leopold Senghor, and Leon de Moss. It was created in response to European colonialism and racism and was influenced by the Harlem Renaissance Movement. Unfortunately, Fanon's life was short-lived and he passed away at the tender age of 36 on December 6, 1961, and was survived by his wife, Josie Fanon. Here's a timeline of his life. As previously stated, Fanon was born in 1925. And during World War II, France fell under the rule of the Nazis and French sailors began to take over French territory such as Martinique. As a result, the sailors abused the people of Martinique who were of African descent, some Indian descent. Um, so they abused them by subjecting them to racism, harassment, violence, and sexual violence. So in 1942, Fanon fled to Dominica to enlist in the Free French Army, where he experienced even more racism and anti-blackness. In 1945, Fanon returned home where he completed his studies at the University of Lyon. While at the university, he experienced more anti-black racism, you can't catch a break, <laughs> and wrote an essay titled An Essay for the Disalienation of Blacks, which later became his first published book. Black Skin, White Mass, which I will discuss later. In 1951, Fanon qualified as a psychiatrist and completed his residency at St. Alban sur Limignol, I don't know how to pronounce it, sorry guys, in France. In 1952, he published his first book, Black Skin, White Mass, a psychiatric exploration of colonialism and its legacy on black and white bodies. His book, in his book, he challenged the use of psychoanalysis by applying it to the relationships between black and whites in the Caribbean, how blackness and whiteness was expressed in the language, in the language pro-whiteness and anti-black racism. For one, he examined how race is taught in early education with blackness being synonymous to, to evil and aggression, while whiteness represented purity and intelligence. I remember this being taught to me in AP literature and language if any of you guys remember that. He also points out how this is learned and internalized at a young age to the point where children even follow and believe what was taught to them. He also touched upon the possibility of intimate interracial relationships between black and white people. For instance, if a black woman were to engage in a relationship with a white man, white man, she would believe the relationship is bringing her closer to whiteness. Similarly, when a black man is in a relationship with a white woman, he states, she proves that I am worthy of white love. I am loved like a white man, therefore I am a white man. Unfortunately, whiteness is unattainable, for, according to Fanon, for black bodies. And by trying to be white, it is proof that self-hatred and racism is embedded in colonialism and furthers the notion of inferiority. In 1953, after publishing his first book, Fanon was appointed as a psychiatrist and chief of service at Build a hospital in Algeria, where he treated French soldiers who tortured civilians and victims of torture. While working at the hospital, he implemented changes to acknowledge and respect the cultural differences of, among patients. Some of his changes to 
the hospital included minimizing the use of restraints. Fanon was very big on liberation. You read that. Um, prohibited the use of the term native and European as it was div divisive and depicted the hierarchical system that already existed in some places. And open wars for qualified patients in occupational programs. In 1956, he resigned from his position due to his distaste for supporting the French because of torture, the racism, the anti-blackness that was happening around him. In 1959, Fanon published his second book titled A Dying Colonialism, a political approach to the relationship between the colonized and the colonizer. In his book, he examines the changes that occurred in Algerians during the revolution. One of the most famous, quote, famous quotes from the text is, it is the white man who creates the Negro, but it's the Negro who creates negritude. In this quote, he emphasized both the psychological and behavioral responses to colonialism. Although the oppressed are met with, a, with barriers and anti-black racism, they united to oppose such powers. I also want you guys to be mindful that even though this text wasn't as focused with psychology as um, black skin and white mass, it still had that framework embedded in it. Before his death in 1961, Fanon published The Wretched of the Earth, an almost call for action against oppressors and the methods they used to oppress. Although the text describes how violence can be used to overthrow and disable colonialism, the main focus of the text is liberation. He utilizes his experience in psychology, politics, and activism to describe how the very act and nature of colonialism is violent and degrading and it dehumanizes the oppressed or the colonized. So he says violence must be used to destroy it. In 1964, he published Toward the African Revolution, posthumously after his death. The purpose of this book was to express his views on Pan-Africanism and to also encourage a revolution against colonialism. Although Fanon is not very known for the research that he conducted, like experimental research, he still has contributed to psychology a bunch. Although Fanon uses psychoanalysis as a framework in some of his books, such as Black Skin and White Mass, he challenged stigma for his neglect of the social institutional factors that contribute to character development. And for his depiction of psychoanalysis, he emphasizes how development is influenced by one's childhood and the forgotten events that exist in the unconscious. However, Fanon points out that colonialism and racism can also lead to character development. For instance, the use of language and text can influence how one views others and themselves. I use an example of the use of language in children's books with the representation of blackness and whiteness. So Hugh describes in his writing of Fanon how when a black child even sees the heroes in a text, they fit more with the white um, hero because whiteness it was synonymous to purity, virtue, and intellect. He also contributed with neurosis of blackness. According to Freud, neurosis is when someone experiences anxiety and frustration because the ego, reality, suppresses the part of the id, instinct. Freud's depiction of neurosis does not take into account historical and social context that black people may experience. Therefore, Fanon's neurosis of blackness emphasizes how colonialism can lead to the desire, to the desire in black people to obtain full humanity which in our world that we exist in is whiteness. I provided the example of interracial relationships, but I'll give another example. Another example of neurosis of blackness would be the act of straightening one's hair. Although countries like the United States have required black women to straighten their hair or wear wigs that are straight because their natural hair is deemed unprofessional or unkempt, the straightening of one's hair can imply the desire to get closer to whiteness, which is an effect of colonialism. He also talks about psychology of racism. And to put it short, racism prevents someone from feeling human because the world around them tells them that they are not and enforces standards to ensure that they will never obtain it. So he talked about, like I said, the interracial relationships, although they may, may be in a relationship with someone who is white, they will never be considered white. As seen in his contributions to the Black, 
Bilda Psychiatric Hospital and in his books, Fanon was an advocate for liberation. While Chief of Service, Fanon minimized the use of restraints and elected for more open wars for some patients because of the impact confinement may have on the psyche. He also calls for unity and the revolution to overthrow colonialism. I know I gave one earlier, but there here's another famous quote by Franz Fanon. The oppressed will always believe the worst about themselves. This quote eliminates how racism can be internalized because of how prevalent it is. Um, this is the end of my um, presentation, so I have a few questions for you guys. So the first thing you guys can do if you want is choose a quote from the reading and submit a comment about it. I know this is what we usually do, so I wanted you to, got to give you guys the option to do that. The second question I have for you guys is the school of psychology Franz Fanon is typically placed in is psychoanalysis. Is there another school of psychology you would place Fanon into and why? The third question is, Hugh F. Buss uses the Bronx as an example of a contemporary colony that is enduring the effects of racism, exploitation, and colonialism. Provide an example of a contemporary colony and describe how its conditions can be changed. And this is a question I did not include, but I wanted to hear how you guys felt about it. Um, typically, in our um, department, France Fanon isn't touched upon when you talk about the major thinkers in it, so let me know if you ever heard of Franz Fanon. Have you read any of his works before this class? And thank you. Have a great day, everyone.